Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for being here. We're certainly sensitive to your, your time demand, so we'll try to get you out of here in a reasonable hour. Um, we have, in terms of the agenda, we have two uh, presentations this evening, uh, one from PennDOT, the other uh, from the uh, Pen uh, Hereford Township Police Department. Uh, we've tried to anticipate your questions and concerns and incorporate those um, into the presentation, so hopefully we'll deal with a lot of your questions and, and concerns as part of the presentations. And to the extent that we don't answer your questions and concerns, we're going to have a question and answer session at the end. So um, if you could just hold your questions until then, I'd appreciate it. Let me start by just making a couple brief introductions. Uh, first, I'm Andy Lewis. I'm the fifth ward commissioner. And to my right is uh, third ward commissioner Kevin McCluskey. Uh, Kevin represents the area east of Ardmore Avenue. And I think this project, uh, these bridge closures are clearly going to impact the township uh, tremendously, but I think most significantly in the third and the fifth ward. And Kevin and I will be working with the public to mitigate um, the impact and to keep all of you informed throughout the process. So thank you for being here as a co-host this evening, Kevin. Um, also joining us tonight at the end is Larry Gentilly. Larry's our township manager. He does a fabulous job in terms of managing our township on a day-to-day -day basis um, and the financial affairs and the operations and has a great team and really has transformed this township. And thank you for being here, Larry. Uh, also with us um, is our chief, uh, Chief Viola. Uh, Chief has only been with us for 46 years. Cool. Uh, he started out. He started out on patrol uh, as a patrolman. He worked his way up to deputy chief and was promoted in the last couple of months to chief, um, and a well-deserved position that he earned. And as a result of his vacancy, that created a vacancy in the deputy chief position. And Joe Hagen, to his left, uh, is our new deputy chief. He served 23 years. Uh, on the police force and also uh, sir started out in patrol so thank you both for being here uh, we also have PennDOT I want to make sure I get your title right PennDOT consultant uh, manager George Gumas uh, George will be coordinating not only this uh, the College Avenue project but he also be coordinating on behalf of PennDOT the Ardmore Avenue bridge closures so we'll be working with George over the course of the next two and a half years pretty closely on both of these uh, closings um, and representing uh, State Senator Dana Leach, uh, District Office Director for Senator Leach, uh, Judy Trumpetta. So thank you for being here, Judy. Um, also want to thank uh, some Fifth Ward residents, uh, Tom Caramonico is in the audience, um, PE, and also David Channon, who uh, helped me uh, kind of as a, as a sounding board throughout this process. Um, I met with PennDOT and also will be helping us on, the, on this bridge project as well as the, uh, the Arbor Avenue bridge project. So thank you to Tom and to David Chan and Esquire for their input and guidance. Also want to acknowledge uh, in the audience, uh, Commissioner Oliva, uh, second ward commissioner, and he is also vice president of the board. Thank you for being here, Mario. And also uh, my good friend, um, uh, commissioner from Lower Marion Township. He's, he lives on the wrong side of the tracks, but that's okay. Uh, Scott Zeloff uh, is here as well, so thank you for being here, Scott. Um, before we uh, start the presentations, um, let me preface everything by repeating what I've said consistently in the emails, if you've received my emails, and also what I mentioned in uh, uh, the most recent uh, cover letter of, of our township newsletter. And uh, that is the extremely disruptive impact these bridge closures uh, will have uh, uh, can't be understated or underestimated in my view. I think we need to expect the worst and hope uh, for something less. Uh, but it's certainly going to be very disruptive. Uh, and you're going to see the PennDOT detour plan here in a minute, but it's basically Hereford Road to Ardmore Avenue to Darby Road to College and the reverse. So if you're not familiar with the area, you're going to take the detour route. If you're familiar with the area, you're going to look for the fastest way to get from point A to point B. And that means taking shortcuts, cutting down side streets. Uh, you know, we all put up with speeding and, and people floating through stop signs as it is. It's only going to get worse. So, um, so we're going to have to exercise some some patience and certainly uh, in, in the conversations that I've had with, uh, in fact, we met a, a week ago Friday with um, Larry Gentilly and the chief and the deputy chief. You know, and our top priority is to make sure uh, that public safety is number one. That we don't have any fatalities uh, uh, throughout this process in both these uh, these bridge closures and also obviously to make sure that the construction workers um, get through these the, these reconstruction projects uh, safely as well so safety is our top priority uh, second priority is to to try to mitigate this as best we can it's going to be extremely difficult um, 
uh, and you're going to hear from the Hereford Township Police Force, uh, Chief Viola and Deputy Chief Hagen on this subject. We're going to try to mitigate uh, through uh, speed enforcement and traffic stop sign enforcement. But I think we all have to understand that we can't um, we can't redeploy the whole Hereford Township Police Department into the fifth and the third ward for the next two and a half years. Uh, they will be here and they'll do the best they can. It's not going to be perfect, um, but I can assure you they'll do their job. So. Uh, that's all the bad news I had to give. I, I do have some good news, and George, you're going to hear from George here in a minute, but uh, hopefully the gain will be worth the pain in the end. And um, what we're going to get is, I think, is a uh, much more efficient bridge. We're going to have queuing uh, coming up College Avenue, both sides of College Avenue. You're going to be able to make a left-hand turn on, on Hereford Road, which you can't presently. That's going to be a major improvement. Uh, we're going to have an adaptive tra the traffic signal, which George will explain basically keeps traffic moving more efficiently. Uh, we're going to have a, a much more aesthetically pleasing uh, bridge um, and gateway through our community. And we're going to have a structurally sound structure, a structurally sound bridge that's going to last certainly through all of our lifetime. So we're going to have to just put up with this one time. So anyway, hopefully in the end, this is all going to be worth uh, what we have to have to endure. So with that, let me turn it over to George uh, Gumas uh, from, from PennDOT. Thank you for being here, George. And He's going to share the details uh, with you, and uh, and then we'll hear from the police department, and then open it up to questions and answers. All right. Um, you want to go down there? Or can, do can you speak from you, the mics right there? Well, good evening. My name is George Gumas. I'm the project manager for PennDOT uh, for the Hebford. Uh, for the College Avenue and Ardmore Avenue bridges here in Haverford Township. Um, the first one on the list here is uh, College Avenue. That's the one that you're all c concerned about because we're on the verge of uh, moving to construction. Um, we're... Yeah, I'll, I'll just give, give some background while can't, you... Can't be without technical. Get that up there. <laughs> uh, the, the, the status of the project is that we're... Um, at the end of the final design phase, meaning that uh, we are ready just about to advertise the project. There are a few outstanding issues which have uh, caused some delay to that, uh, a, a lot of delay. There's a right-of-way um, issue that's continuing uh, as we speak, and we're uh, more hopeful than ever that that's going to be resolved soon. Um, so we're, we, while I can't give you a solid date on when uh, construction will start, uh, we're hoping before the end of this year. Um, that's that's about all I can uh, I can't really give a promise because that that process doesn't have um, a clear uh, end to it except that it should be soon. Uh, we're hoping this summer uh, we can get right of way clearance for the project. So what that means that once that's uh, um, acquired, and we can go to advertisement. The project can be advertised for uh, construction. So uh, again, to uh, locate the bridge, it's the right light. there. Yeah. You have a red light. I don't. Maybe you could highlight with a red light. All right. So for uh, this, this is uh, Haverford Road here, College Avenue, and you see the college on this side, uh, and then the bridge over Septa here, and what you don't see, of course, is Cobb's Creek here, and there's also a, a small arch culvert uh, over Cobb's Creek. Uh, these both will need to be replaced. Um, there are also retaining walls on either side. So uh, the scope of this project is uh, there are two parts to it really. There are the replacement of these structures um, and then uh, as you know this intersection, the movement through the intersection um, uh, on college at, at peak hours is difficult. It's, there's no left turn, dedicated left turn lane. Um, so let me uh, walk through that. Larry, if you wouldn't. Sure. No, that's five. I think it's that one right there you want, right there. Right there, yeah. That's two, that's good, two. Now the next one to the left. To the left, there, that, that's one. Right. So, uh, what's not showing? There we go. This is the, the view from the side, the elevation of the proposed bridge uh, from the north and the south there. 
and you see you've got the bridge over septa and the culvert here, and then these retaining walls um, that are what's called, uh, uh, they're, they're um, like Lego block. They're, they can be disassembled uh, and replaced. And so um, that work was done back in 1984. If you recall, if there were those of you around here, remember that these retaining walls were built in 1984. They're going to be uh, reclaimed as much as possible in this process. The, 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 the line here is what will need to be removed in order to get the work done for the bridge and the culvert. And then uh, they'll be replaced as able, um, re re replaced in, in uh, kind, either if they're not uh, in good condition or reused. Uh, so the bridge itself uh, is quite a, a challenge. It's over SEPTA. There's a, a lot of utilities involved here, uh, both directions, aerial utilities. Uh, and of course, working with SEPTA is going to be a great challenge for the project. Um, so uh, we'll get into that in a bit. Move to the next one. That would be this one here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the intersection itself. So uh, this is what's going to uh, be the final condition of, of the intersection. You're going to have left turn lanes. This is, again, the college side. You're going to be coming down college, and you'll be able to turn left onto Haverford and Likewise, coming over the bridge on college, you'll be able to turn left on Haverford in both directions. There'll be a, a dedicated left turn signal there. Um, What's the queuing lane? How many cars? Uh, it's, it's about, in, in the lane, I think it's about four in, in this side and three or so in this side. But you're allowed, you'll be able to use the, the gore areas, these striped areas as well. Uh, and uh, now at the intersection also, we've got uh, installed what's called an adaptive signal, and it's uh, actually a video detection system that is uh, able to read uh, in real time the traffic flow and adjust. So uh, it keeps the light on as long as possible, really, to keep traffic moving to a reasonable extent, and then uh, adapts according to the, the, the traffic. Um, likewise, so uh, uh, on Haverford, uh, the question has come up, what about this left turn lane on Haverford? Um, because currently, it's a, a, when it's red, you can't make a left. Well, this has a, a, um, a, a slightly different uh, function, and uh, you'll be able to actually turn when it's green. So there will be a left turn dedicated, left turn signal there. But when that goes to uh, red, uh, it, it won't be for you in the left lane. You'll still be able to move through the green. Uh, you'll just have to wait for traffic to clear. You'll be, you, but you won't have to wait till the next uh, phase or cycle of left turn arrow. You'll, so that's an improvement for that movement. Uh, and again, this adaptive signal um, for most of the time, because Haverford is the, is the dominant movement here, um, except at peak hours on college, uh, it will actually be flowing more freely than currently on Haverford. Um, again, at peak hours, when, the, when college is, is backing up, then the, the signal will switch over to give, giving preference to those left turns uh, to keep, and for that traffic to keep it flowing at, at peak hours. So this is going to give you an idea, if you can see that from way back, uh, what it's going to look like at, at uh, different locations. So this is, again, on college. Um, we're at the college to your left looking south or west on college. What currently is there, you see uh, there's no left turn lane. This is the proposed condition with the left turn lane. Uh, sidewalk will be replaced again. Uh, um, we're widening out a bit, so the sidewalk is going to push out a little bit. You'll see across the road, we'll get to that, but you can see likewise across on the other side, the left turn lane. Uh, this is the rendering of the proposed bridge. Currently, um, it actually has two spans. There's a pier uh, next to the septa tracks. This is going to go to one span, clear span there, and uh, it's going to have some uh, treatment on it, some uh, stone uh, facing treatment there. It's a form liner. It's not real stone, but it's made to look like stone. We'll, that's what you see on these, these renderings over here. Again, from the other side, now we're looking down college, uh, away from the college. We're looking uh, west, or, and uh, you've got now this beginning of this uh, turn lane. This gore or striped area is preparing you for the left turn lane over here as you come across the bridge. Um, and the, uh, the 
parapets have this stone form liner uh, feature on them. Can you talk about the sidewalk? Right. Uh, the sidewalk um, is, uh, there's going to be no sidewalk on the, on the proposed bridge. Uh, the sidewalk, first of all, there's no, there's no station there anymore, uh, but also um, the, the need for a sidewalk is, is really, uh, was not determined for this bridge. There's going to be a shoulder area. Um, as you see, this, this is going to be a stripe. Uh, the, the white line to the right is the shoulder on that north side of the bridge. So pedestrians will still be able to cross, um, cross the bridge? Well, yeah, pedestrians cross, but again, on the other side of the bridge, there really is no shoulder to, of, to think of on College Avenue. So uh, having a, sh uh, a sidewalk to nowhere really has no purpose. In there are this, a lot of, this, a lot of uh, folks that used to go to access hair for college, but, but they, can, they can access it through. Oh, that. yeah, that's, yeah. That's the shoulder area is for, for pedestrians. Yeah, right. they can, that's, that's useful there. But uh, in terms of um, getting to the intersection, that maybe we can show back at that, uh, that plan, the previous plan. And died. Yep, that one. Uh, so there, there are crosswalks. If you can see the in the larger plan, uh, there would be crosswalks to move around the intersection uh, of College and Haverford. Um, so there will be signals, pedestrian signals there, and crossings for. Uh, the intersection. No, there's no plan for a sidewalk in the future. There's one now, that's right. Uh, but again, there, the determination to, for a sidewalk, there are a number of uh, reasons to put a sidewalk on this bridge. And first of all, it's, it's rather steep. Um, so for ADA compliance, it actually doesn't meet because of the steep, uh, steepness of the sidewalk. Secondly, um, again, the sidewalk, uh, the destination really, uh, you're, you're moving pedestrians across to, uh, there's no um, destination on the other side of the bridge. If, and there's no plan to put a uh, pedestrian path or a sidewalk on the other side of the bridge for the future. So. Uh, Right. I mean, again, the, and the shoulder is there for, for pedestrian use going over there. If we could, let's, uh, let's hold our questions till the end. Just so if you have a question, you can come up to the mic. That way people uh, watching it at home can, can hear the questions as well, unless you want to repeat the questions, George. So, okay. Right. thanks. I mean, the question is, uh, again, for the sidewalk, for the need for a sidewalk and the determination not to put sidewalk on the bridge. Um, and again, we, we uh, have determined that the need for a sidewalk wasn't there. Uh, for a number of reasons and the, uh, the justification for it so that we can provide a shoulder uh, access is there for uh, in the shoulder for pedestrians but you also didn't want to widen the bridge and 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 when you decided not to widen the, is that correct if you didn't oh, widen we, the yeah bridge? we're using the same uh the width of the bridge remains the same the, the walls see. are being retained the same uh width of the structure so those are being uh reused we're, we're making the roadway wider and adding that turn lane within the existing width of the roadway. That's why we lost the sidewalk. Well, you I, wouldn't have put it in any, you probably wouldn't have put it back in anyway. We, yeah, we felt, that, again, the determination is not for uh, the width so much as for the need for a sidewalk. Uh, really, that's the determination. Um, this is the signal here. And uh, I, I put that in to try to show you the signal that's gonna be there, this one here. That's what it's gonna look like on Haverford when you're moving. You're gonna have that for the left turn. So it'll have left arrows, green, yellow, and when it goes to red, um, actually it won't go to red, it, those will go off, and this, this will then follow the, the signal, uh, the, 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 straight moving, uh, the straight movement signal. So you won't be stopped turning left here by a signal. You'll be able to, to wait until there's a clear, uh, there's uh, clear movement for you to turn left onto College Avenue. Um, okay. Yep, right through. 
Right, so this is, again, a rendering of the bridge uh, in elevation from the track level. Um, again, that with that stone, the stone uh, form liner feature on it. And if you want to go to the next one as well. And again, this is the street view now looking uh, from the other side of the bridge and towards the college. This is where the road is coming up onto the bridge. It starts to, to wide, to move to the right, and you get this gore area, which then beyond that becomes the left turn lane. It almost looks like a sidewalk on the left there, George. No, there's no sidewalk. There's no sidewalk. This here? Yeah. That's just, that's a little bit deceptive. That's the bottom of the, the barrier. Like you see here, this is a, a little flare of the barrier here that's plain concrete. Uh, okay. So it's not that wide? No, it's not walkable. That's actually a vertical face. Those are vertical faces on the barrier. This looks wider, I guess. Um, so if pedestrians wanted to walk, they would, walk, they would be walking. Well, they, they, you want to go on the other side. This is a narrower shoulder here. This, you wouldn't... You want to use the wider shoulder on the other side. I think, we're, I think we've gone to the end, um, the slides. Yeah, I think we've... Right, okay. So that's the, uh, that's the project. Again, the status is that uh, waiting for this right-of-way clearance, and uh, we're hopeful that we can get to construction uh, in the next few months. Um, duration is the next question, uh, the detour, length of detour, and uh, it's going to be likely a year-long detour. Uh, that's at least for the detour. The construction will probably be longer. Um, going to construction late fall is not the ideal time. It's always good to go in early spring, but if we get the, the window to go ahead, we're going to move uh, to start construction as soon as we can. Um, there is a challenge of, of doing uh, construction and, and concrete work in wintertime, and that's, that's what would uh, be our challenge, being in construction through the winter. Uh, but we're going to be um, going at least into next year, next uh, fall, with construction. So expect that detour to be uh, around a year in length. Um, oh, the detour. I didn't mention the detour. Okay, great. Yeah, again, the detour is uh, the Haverford to Ardmore to Darby. Um, it's a straight, pretty straight shot there. Um, it'll be signed uh, pretty clearly for everyone. And again, this is the, the state uh, signs state routes, so that's not to say that people can't use other routes, but we are required to show on our detours uh, a detour using state routes. Okay, um, any questions at this time? Yes, ma'am. On the outside of the, the finishing of the bridge, uh, what I saw was that box, will that be that um, the resistant finish on it? Uh, they yeah. don't use the graffiti resistant. Can you repeat resistant. that question? Uh, unless people want to come up to the mic, whatever is easiest. Right, uh, uh, they, they stopped using graffiti resistant uh, coatings on, uh, on most surfaces now. Uh, so that's no longer used. It's, it oftentimes peels off and and looks just as bad when it, with, with time. Yes? Can, would you mind coming, do you mind coming up to the mic? I, I can. Just, just so people can uh, hear the question at home, thanks. So I had a question about the sight lines over the bridge. Right now, if you're waiting at the bottom, I'm always looking in my rear view mirror, I figure somebody's going to rear end me. Is it going to be any flatter or will it still be? It's pretty much the same. That's the ch it's a challenge of the site here. It's a really uh, difficult. Right. You know, if, if you're given a, a blank slate, you can do anything. But we've got septic we have to clear. Uh, and we've got that intersection we have to come down to real fast. Right. So uh, we've done our best to, to adjust it uh, minimally, but you really can't do too much yet. Otherwise, um, you know, if you're going to raise from the, the other side, you raise your bridge up, uh, you know, all that fill area with that, those retaining walls, you'd have to go back a lot further and start building walls much higher and come in. And even at that point, you're still coming up to the bridge and you have to drop down to get to Haverford. So um, not a lot we can do. We're, we're going to just have the signage that's out there now. Um, the signal will be visible, um, you know, as you're coming from college uh, up to the intersection. 
that signal will be visible as you're coming in, so you'll be able to see it from a distance. It'll have a, a signal head. Uh, so if there's a red or a green, you'll be able to see that from a good distance. You can see it now, but people so come speeding over that. It doesn't stop. And, yeah, you know. there's, there's <laughs> not a lot we, we can uh, do about that. It's, it's a challenging location. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yes. Can you can you come up to the, can you come up to the sorry? Yeah, I, I can repeat that. Just so everybody knows, it's being recorded and it's going to be on TV, so we want to make sure people can hear the questions as well. Sure. Um, tell me what the purpose and objective is of rebuilding this bridge. Is it primarily to provide a left turn lane, or oh. is there other um, objectives? Right. The the, uh, the bridge itself, the replacement, the bridge is structurally deficient, uh, which means it's uh, it's not dangerous, but it's high time for replacement. It's about an 80-year-old structure, um, and it, it's, the, the beams themselves are, are in poor condition, uh, as well as the abutments, the supporting structures. Uh, also, the culvert is now 90-something uh, uh, years old that is over the creek, and that's uh, got um, significant uh, damage to it or, or wear to it that is going to be replaced at this time. We're taking the opportunity to replace that as well. So the, the bridge primarily is the, is the concern. Uh, it's, uh, rating fairly uh, poorly at this point, and, it's, and uh, before it goes to posting, we don't want to get to the point where we have to post that bridge and then limit, limit uh, travel over it. So uh, this is a good time to, to replace it. Yes, sir. I'd like to uh, echo what the uh, a woman over on the other side suggested about the elimination of that sidewalk. I live just on the college, on the other side. Yes, sir the Haverford College, living in Haverford College, closest thing to College Avenue and Haverford Road. That Haverford College trail, I walk it every day. In the other direction, at any hour, I think I run into 50 people at any time. A lot of people, and if you live on this side of the, of the bridge, it looks like you're taking your life in your hands to get over to that College Avenue trail. There is now a sidewalk, and it looks like what you've called a shoulder is simply a very narrow stripe on the road. It's a five-foot shoulder. Yeah. It's, it's five-foot shoulder? Yeah, it's fairly wide there. Uh, so it's, it's enough space uh, for, for pedestrians to get over the bridge. Yeah. With five feet, would you consider putting in a sidewalk? Because I, I, I really believe there is a need. I, I agree with your comment, because I know that bridge is used a lot with people that cross over to Hereford College to use the trail. So I just throw that out if that's something that's not too late. What's that? Many of them with baby carriages. With baby carriages, right? yeah. So I don't know whether you have room for sidewalk, and I just throw that as an idea. Right. I mean, again, we're, we're not uh, considering it for, as I mentioned, for a number of reasons. Uh, again, ADA compliance uh, makes it uh, virtually impossible to put a sidewalk that's ADA compliant on the bridge. Um, so uh, it's, it's... What, what are those requirements, George? I'm just well, it's, it's too steep. For it's ADA. too steep. Yeah. Oh, I see. So we yeah. could, you couldn't put a sidewalk in even if you yeah, wanted once to. Yeah, when you go into the, the new... Um, Compliance for ADA, it's too steep for... Too steep. Yeah, you can't really uh, meet the, the requirements for the, the slope of the, of the sidewalk. Uh, and then again, uh, secondly, having a, a sidewalk to virtually reconsider it, uh, dead ending, it dead ends into an, a shoulder that has no width on the other side. The shoulder dies off quickly, and um, a, providing a, a path to a shoulderless uh, roadway, that's not um, typically done. Yes, sir. I, had, I had a question, if I could. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you, you mentioned uh, working with SEPTA a couple times. Um, ha, has there been any discussion as to whether that's going to cause delays to the train route along there? Sorry, delays to the? the to the Route 100 that goes along there. Is when, that when there is work being done, uh, there will be outages on the, on the route. We're aiming for those outages to be uh, weekend outages. So that's weekend work to get done when we need to uh, be up against SEPTA or working over SEPTA. So a weekend outage in SEPTA's uh, book is 11 p.m. on Saturdays to 5 a.m. on Monday morning. So uh, there will be a number of those outages for both uh, for utility work that needs to be done as well as construction. But you don't, uh, when we last met, I think you said there were, you expected three or four of those. It wasn't like every weekend. No, not every weekend, but not certainly not three or four. There would probably be more significant. The utilities themselves have about six scheduled six. at this point. So uh, six, six full weekends? Uh, well, they're not full. They'll, they'll probably, it, it's, it's variable. Some of them require most of that time. 
yeah. and some of them only require a few hours. Okay. But they still have to get that outage from SEPTA to do the work. Um, and then for construction itself, as you can see, when you take out the bridge, you're going to have to have an outage when you're taking it down, so they have to shut down. Um, and then when they replace the bridge itself, put the, the beams back up, uh, that'll need an outage as well, uh, as well as a few of the other activities uh, on the project. So in terms, of, in terms of College Avenue, on the College Avenue, or uh, Hereford College side of College Avenue, you're adding the queuing lane there. Um, will that require that that, that, inter that portion of College Avenue ever be closed, or is it always going to be? No, uh, yeah, for the roadway work itself, the, the, we're, we're aiming to do the, the work simultaneously, the bridge work and the roadway widening and the turn lanes uh, on uh, College. Yeah. So the work at College for that turn, the turn lanes will be done under traffic. So we'll be shifting uh, traffic and doing work to widen the roadway. When that's done, then we'll shift the traffic over to that completed portion and then uh, complete the other side. So that, at least as far as that intersection is concerned, it won't be uh, requiring a detour. It's just when you get to the bridge itself. Else? So in terms of hours, too, is it, is it a 9 to 5? Uh, 9 to 5 as well. Monday through Friday. Construction is usually a little earlier. They start early in the morning, but it's eight-hour days, five, eight-hour days. Five, eight-hour days. Yeah. And then selective weekends. Selective weekends, yeah, selective that's weekends. right. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? I don't know if this is the appropriate time to address Buck Lane, which is not on the map. Um, that is the other bridge. Uh, so you have Ardmore Avenue, College Avenue, and then you would have Buck Lane. Is this the appropriate time to bring this up sure. or no? Um, so the detour is very clear, so those that do know the shortcuts will use Buck Lane. And that currently is a very highly traveled road. Um, in addition to it being highly traveled, it's also um, the other cut through from Haverford Road to Lancaster Avenue. And we already have a congestion issue. Um, Buck Lane is a single, um, Basically, it's a single file. Um, it's really hard to get two cars by. Um, we, we try, um, at least on the two blocks that I um, am involved in. But it's, I'm just really concerned about the traffic flow for those that will not be taking that detour. And those that know this area will definitely def defer to Buck Lane. Um, I have two other points that I want to bring up. Uh, you've um, opened up a Pandora's box about the sidewalk not being ADA compliant. So if it's not ADA compliant on College Avenue, it's not ADA compliant on Buck Lane. That is a concern. People use that every day. There is a stop there. The third thing that I want to address is my house runs parallel to, the street I live on runs parallel to Haverford Road. And the noise that we hear from the traffic on Haverford Road between College Avenue and Buck Lane is, especially during rush hour, we hear everything. We hear the, the school buses, we hear the emergency vehicles, we hear the, just the traffic, and we also hear the 100 line. Um, when we've had events in the past, um, say the golf event, when the horns were being used, even on the golf course, we can hear that at our home. So it's gonna be not just disrupt disruptive, but to me, but to all the other neighbors, um, I, I, my house is not being shown on the map. If we just you know, could bring it down a little bit, then you would see um, where we're at, but. I think you're I, at about the next block up here. Is yes, yes, yes. We are right off of um, Buck and Haydock Lane. We're on the corner property. And because um, our um, Buck going up towards Lancaster Avenue is an incline, so as you're going up the street, the houses are raised, so with the noise level it hits us um, and it's just something that just seems like we constantly have projects that are going on it could be building in a house um, it's just something I want to throw out there we have a lot of little children that are on our name on our street as well um, so I'm just concerned when you said that they're going to turn off the power on the weekend does that mean you're going to be working in what hours? SEPTA Sept won't be running on certain selected weekends. If they're not going to be running, when will you be working? That's when the work would be done. Uh, for those particular SEPTA outages, Okay. then the work would be done around, on the bridge. That's, they, we need to take the train off the tracks at that point. They'll be busing around this uh, station 
because there needs to be work on the bridge that has to be done too close to the tracks for the train to be running. So those buses will be using what route? The one up there? They're going to, that's going to be increased. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about SEPTA's route, but I imagine they'll be busing between, uh, it depends on which stations they choose to bus between uh, to get around. Uh, I, I don't know their plans particularly at this point on the getting around the, the work. We can find that answer out. We'll get the answer yeah. from SEPTA. Is that SEPTA's call? That's SEPTA. That's SEPTA's call, yeah. We'll find out. Okay. Um, how do we address the issue about Buck Lane being a, an alternate detour, although it's not officially listed as one by PennDOT, we know it's, I mean, it's just, it's very clear. Right. That's something I think the township has to uh, work out. It's really something we can talk about, but uh, we, again, we can't restrict, you know, PennDOT's job is not to restrict township roads, it's to provide uh, the best state route detour. Again, we uh, can do something about that signal as far as its act action during construction. Uh, we can put something in the contract that would uh, allow that signal to be modified okay. um, so that it works a little more efficiently. The last comment that I have is um, something that someone or had already mentioned about the, um, the decline when you're coming down College Avenue, approaching Haverford Road, getting ready to cross over, going up to Lancaster Avenue. You do look in your rear view mirror. Has there been any consideration to changing the grade of the pavement? so that it, there would be like a rumble strip or something of that nature so people ha are inclined to slow down a little bit and especially this is a concern during the winter months when we have icing right um, again we we work with what we've got there unfortunately there's not a lot you can do about that grade coming down short of raising haverford road up at that intersection or uh, there's really nothing you can do and, and that's not feasible um i I'm not too sure about that. Um, to uh, change your, to change the the pavement, does that that's not necessarily increasing the height. You mean in terms of the the, the material that's used on the Talk pavement? About a ripple, does, some kind of ripple, some kind of sound. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. We haven't considered rumble strips. Uh, they they aren't really used uh, for mitigation in these situations. It's uh, usually signage uh, and line striping uh, for guiding people both on the road as well as signage to make them aware of the intersection coming up. Is this something you're um, offering to look into further since I am bringing it up? I, we can look into it, but usually rumble strips aren't, aren't uh, preferred. For, they're, they're also a noise issue as well. People hitting the rumble strip, it's not something that can be taken away. It's there all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not usually preferred uh, for uh, mitigating at intersections. How much higher will that traffic light be? Uh, well, Sorry? How much higher will that traffic, the adaptive traffic signal be uh, versus where, where it is today? How much higher will it be? The, vi uh, the actual height of the signal? Yeah. It'll be the same. It'll be the same. Oh, so you won't have it any, so, so it'll be the, coming over that crest, you won't have any more visibility, or coming, approaching that crest, you won't have any more visibility to, uh, to Again, to the it, there, there will just be a signal, signal. head that's put facing uh, on, that, on the signal that's going to be put on the college side. There's going to be a, a signal uh, mast arm over this side here. Sorry, I'm down the wrong one. Down there. And it's going to be a sitting here, and you'll be able to see coming up, there will be a signal uh, head facing as you're coming towards the bridge. You'll be able to see that, that red light or green light, whatever the light is, right. uh, as you're coming towards it. Um, it's not going to be significantly different than what's there, but it'll just be a, a little uh, improvement. Okay. Any other questions for George before we, uh, we hear from the police department? Thank you, George. All right. Thank you. So we'll turn it over to Chief uh, Viola and be Chief Hagan. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, listen, we all feel your pain. We, we all feel your pain with, with the detours. Uh, we suffer through them also. Uh, we all live here and, and we, we uh, have the same issues. We all travel and have for road and you know, how difficult it is in the morning before the detours even start. And as far as Buck Lane is concerned, your concerns there, we are right now in the process of doing traffic counts in all the roads at the commissioner's request uh, that would lead into any possible uh, back road detours, including uh, Buck Lane, to see what the traffic counts are now and that what they will be after the detour starts. So if we have to make any adjustments as far as our traffic enforcement, we'll be able to do, to do that. But what we have found over the years when detours start, the first week or so are, are very difficult. People kind of find their way after that. And, and yes, it's, it's going to be increasing all the roads. We understand that. But from the police department standpoint, we're, we're going to do extra enforcement, have extra patrols out there. 
Uh, and as the commissioner said, we, we can't dedicate the whole police department to one area. But what we find is when we hit or saturate an area early and people get the idea there's going to be police stop signs and traffic lights, uh, they have a tendency to slow down. We issue some tickets. And usually the first tickets we issue are the people who live right in that neighborhood. So understand that. So uh, so when you call the commissioner, he's going to say no, I can tell you that. Yeah, I used to um, say pay your ticket. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to do everything that we can as a police department to enforce the laws on the streets as far as speed limits, stop signs, uh, traffic lights. Now, Deputy Chief Hagan has counts, and he'll share with you now. Uh, we're doing them now before school closes so we can get the true read because we know in the summertime things drop off a little bit. So um, he said it's going to start towards by the end of the year. Am I correct with that? So it, it's, we're not sure yeah, when. Summer. So uh, hopefully it'll, it'll start before the, uh, the cold weather gets here. But we'll have all these counts ahead of time, and then we'll do counts again once that detour goes in effect to see exactly how much increased traffic is on these streets. So when you call and say, you know, I see a lot of cars, we can tell you this is what the difference is between uh, now and what's coming up. So Deputy Chief. Here, Jay, you want to move over? Currently, uh, just to put your mind a little ease, currently right now on that section of College in Cooperstown, there's only 7,700 cars per day that come down that stretch. A lot of vehicles, the, the heavier amount of traffic is actually Cooperstown and Cooperstown. They use that and they come back as people feeding back into the neighborhood. But on a given day, it's roughly 7,700 cars in that stretch that's going to be closed. That comes out to about, in a 24-hour period, 320 cars per hour. They're going to be detoured. Of course, we all know during morning, afternoon rush that the volume's higher, but that is a, 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 um, the average number for a 24-hour period. The other side of College Avenue, where the detour is also going to take effect, is 6,700 cars per day. So once they get to College Avenue, they're going either Haverford, left or right, in most times. But that also comes out to 270 some car, uh, cars an hour. So. You're not talking about a large amount of cars. We are currently doing all the studies, um, just so to give you, everyone thinks Landover is a, a heavily traveled roadway. Uh, we all, we live that and we think oh, a lot of cars going down Landover. It's 3,300 cars per day going down Landover Road. So the, it's not a lot of numbers when you get down to it. So as the chief said, the, the first couple days during the detours, people are gonna get, get frustrated if they get into some traffic on Ardmore Avenue. We're going to increase volume on Ardmore Avenue using as a detour, but currently right now on Ardmore Avenue, there's 10,870 cars both directions each day. So you, that's in both directions. So you take that, split that in half, it's about 5,000 cars per day going down Ardmore Avenue. So we're going to be adding the 7,700 roughly to Ardmore Avenue, but it's because it's going to splinter out. People are going to figure out the Landover Road is going to take them out to Haverford Road. They're going to figure out Buck, that stretch of Buck, takes them out to Haverford Road. So that actually filters traffic out a little bit more. So you're not talking large numbers, but you're talking added numbers to the community. We understand that. With those added numbers, we will go out and increase enforcement. If there's a trouble area that we may have visited about the parking or anything that you were saying about that one section of Buck, we'll go out and look at that after the detour takes effect. So we will address any issues that will come up during that time. But you know, everyone here is the road closed. This road's not going to come down here. When you actually sit down and look at the numbers, it's 7,700 cars that are going to be detoured over the course of a 24-hour period. So it just it brings in a little perspective for you. And we feel your pain. We're going to be affected by the detour, but we will be out there doing enforcement for all these residential streets that are affected. Currently, right now, we're doing actually started studies on the side streets that are going to be affected on the, um, we have one on Tunbridge going on right now. Anyone live on Tunbridge or use that street? If you see a little black box on the street, that's our traffic counter. It's tied to a pole. Some, sometimes we get a call about a suspicious thing tied to a pole. That's our traffic and counter. Already. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's our, our traffic counter. So we're currently doing studies on Buck Lane, on this side of Buck Lane, not on the other side. We will do the other side after that. We're going to do Golf House next, and then we're going to do all the streets that are kind of the, will be what we consider possible cut-throughs. The good thing about the areas like the Tunbridges and the Golf Houses, you're not going to, that detour is not going to get you out anywhere. So the first day you may get an increase in traffic by people th figuring I'm going to use this as a shortcut. It's not really going to get them out anywhere. It's going to get them back to college, and then they're going to have to go up college again to Cooper Town and get back around. So 
once they learn that it's not getting them anywhere, they'll stop trying to use it as a detour. So, anyone have any questions for me? Are we? Do yes, sir. Yeah. Do you want to? I'm sorry. Can you come up to the mic, sir? Sorry about that. Does the police department have safety concerns about the notion of pedestrians walking across that bridge without a sidewalk? Um, you put me in a tough spot here. <laughs> Look, I think you ought to no think about it. Anytime there's no sidewalks, we always have safety concerns. It's obvious. But I, I think the way he explained it uh, with, with the, uh, the shoulder to walk across there, and, and, and what he's saying is, uh, you, you put a, a sidewalk that starts nowhere and goes nowhere because there's no sidewalks, I believe, on the College Avenue side going towards the bridge or when you come off it. So I understand where he's coming from. Yes, we have concern. We, we, I'd be, there's still pedestrian activity. Absolutely. There's, there's no doubt about it. But um, uh, I understand what he's saying. I won't say I agree or disagree with it. It's, it's always a concern when you don't have sidewalks. Uh, luckily, we haven't had any pedestrian accidents up there. I remember my time here. Um, uh, so, um, so far, so good. But I, you know, I, if it weren't for the if it weren't for the ADA issue, I would. I yeah. think we should press for it. But it sounds like even if, uh, you know, it sounds. Like I I, th I personally think it's something that's important and we should have. But it sounds like even if we wanted to have it, um, because it's not going to be ADA compliant because of the slope, we can't we can't get it. It's a reality. So. Um, well, you, with, yeah. with ADA, you have to adhere to it. Believe me, we, we suffer through with uh, we're, we're doing stuff in the township, and Larry can attest to that. We uh, it, uh, we have to do some difficult things to make it work. So, are they going to adjust the timing of the Buck Lane light? Because sometimes we sit there for a long time. Well, I think he said that he would put they would put that in the contract. Okay. Um, that's but a state keep, light too, right? That's yeah, a state. Yeah. yeah. Keep in mind that when you make adjustments one way, it affects the traffic the other way. We we toy with this stuff all the time, trying to tweak them by milliseconds. Go ahead, Larry. You want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, one of the things that uh, that I actually have a little bit of experience with is the uh, uh, the traffic adaptive that they're putting in this intersection, and I, I, we're actually extremely pleased that 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 intersection will be the first along Haverford Avenue. We were lucky enough to receive a $292,000 grant um, about a year ago that we're actually started construction uh, on Township Line, Township and Westchester Pike, Darby and Westchester Pike, and Lansdowne, would that be Lansdowne and uh, uh, Township as well. So it's a, it's a, we're putting three of them there. Uh, and we also have uh, two uh, grants into PennDOT, they call them Marley Grants, uh, one for $700,000 and the other one is for another $300,000 and we're hoping uh, that if we continue and we've been lucky to get uh, we've been pretty successful with these grants that we can uh, petition PennDOT to put more of these traffic adaptives along Haverford Avenue to improve and to, to as a layman's terms the way uh, explained to me we were lucky enough uh, the chief and the deputy chief uh, and I were lucky enough to see live in demonstration from our, our uh, engineer uh, Mr. Pannoni um, the, these, there's a timing component, as they said, but it's almost like if you can imagine a police officer at every intercession with a walkie-talkie. For some reason, traffic backs up, and who knows what that reason could be. Uh, there could be a, just a high volume. Uh, that, that intersection sees that in the, in the camera and actually tells the other signal to start moving flow. So it's a phenomenal system. That will, that will have an impact, we're hoping, again, to, to potentially put that at Ardmore Avenue. It probably will be Buck, put Buck at Ardmore Lane. Avenue. And then uh, we can move all the way down to have all of Haverford Avenue done. So we're, my plan is within the next year, we'll have all of Westchester Pike. If you travel along Westchester Pike, you see the volume along that. So, uh, uh, but again, we've, we've, been, we've been blessed uh, to, be, uh, to be successful in some of the grants. So it's uh, uh, something we will take a look at though for, for that intersection. Thank you, Larry. Any other questions? When on Buck Lane mentioned noise, I hear that noise. What I also hear is, of course, your vehicles and emergency uh, vehicles going to Bryn Mawr Hospital along Haverford Road. How much do you imagine there's going to be a slowdown 
for those kinds of vehicles going to Bryn Mawr Hospital. It's to slow the, you think it'll slow them down? Is that the question? Yes, because uh, between, Ard between Ardmore Avenue and Haverford I, Road, I it's going to be pretty congested. Affect them because even in the morning, it's, it's the same issue without the detour. It's, it backs up from uh, Bryn Mawr Avenue down to uh, Haverford, down to Eagle Road. So uh, with that middle lane and uh, lights and sours, I don't think you'll have any issue with emergency vehicles getting okay. through. I really don't. Any other, uh, any other questions, concerns? Can I just sure. mention one yeah. thing? Sure, thank you there. Relating to emergency vehicles for the first time uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, when did we start the Penn uh, relationship? Probably close to two years ago. For the first time, I've been with the township since 79, started emergency services. But for the first time in the history of the township, we actually have a paramedic unit that's actually stationed on this side of the township. You, historically, they used to come from Lenark Fire Company and as far as the old Haverford Hospital. We have a vehicle that's actually stationed right there on Ardmore Avenue, It'll be the 800 block, right there on We've been blessed to, to have a good relationship with Haverford College. So they built a building for us, and we actually have a vehicle there, and we plan on keeping that there for, for many years to come. So uh, it actually re has reduced the amount of response time for our emergency medical service personnel to get on that side of the township. So it's been, it's a, been a great asset. And to answer your question a little further, all emergency vehicles in the township, uh, police, fire, and ambulance, all have what are traffic light emitters. So when an emergency vehicle is coming upon a traffic light, it'll turn that light green uh, for the direction that they're going. So it does, it does make the traffic flow for us. So normally, we, it, I, don't, I don't see any change uh, uh, during construction. Well, thank you all very much for being here. I would just ask if you're not on my email list or Commissioner McCluskey's email list and you're interested in getting periodic updates on the College Avenue Bridge Project, as well as the Ardmore Avenue Bridge Project. Uh, I have a sign, you can sign, you just give me your name and your email address at the end of the meeting, and we'll make sure we put you on our list. So, but thank you for, to all the participants this evening. Thank you to all of you for being here. We appreciate it, and uh, hopefully we'll get through this together. Thank you.